Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between using a softbox to light a subject and, as an alternative, using a sheet of diffusion material. The techniques give very different results. OK, so this is my subject. Uh, so I've just put this lot together on this table and I'm going to put my camera on this tripod in front. Now the camera I'm using is a full frame digital SLR with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front. I have a flash sync trigger on the top, which is also capable of controlling the energy in the studio flash. The whole lot is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to monitor the results. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is pop this on the tripod and we'll just frame up the shot. Just zoom that in to around about the 50mm mark, something like that. We'll just focus that up. Like that. OK, so the next thing to do, just grab an image to see if we're getting any contamination from the house lights. OK, so you can see from this, these are the settings that I had on the camera. Uh, so I had a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, which is the flash sync speed for that camera. Uh, I've got the aperture set to f8 with 100 ISO. And with these settings, uh, apart from the odd highlight, we're getting very little of an image. So I think that should be fine. OK, so with that experiment out of the way, the next thing to do is to set up a light. OK, there we go. So I'm using this Profoto D2. This is a 1000 joule uh, studio flash. And on the front of that, I have this uh, three foot um, Octobox. Now, the idea of this whole demonstration is to show the difference in lighting that you get from a softbox as opposed to using a sheet of diffusion material. So this is uh, basically just set uh, in an arbitrary uh, position to start with. Uh, I've got most of the softbox, as you can see, um, in front of the subject, which is the standard sort of way that you would start lighting something like this. Uh, as far as the energy is concerned on this uh, studio flash, at the moment it's just set on a mid-level uh, energy level. Um, so what I'll do is we'll just turn on the flash sync trigger here, and we'll just take an image just to get an ex idea of the exposure. OK, so you can see from this that it's not bad. Um, it's possibly maybe a stop under. I might just add um, one stop of energy uh, to that light. There we go. Just grab that again. Yes, that seems to have lifted it up a bit. Uh, so this is what we had before, and this is what we've got now. And you can see in this that uh, we actually have an image of the softbox in the bottle, and quite a large highlight running the length of the bottle here. And this is the sort of result you'd expect from a softbox in that position. The other thing that I can see in this image, uh, which I might want to change, is that the depth of field is maybe a little limited. Um, what I'll do is increase the aperture from f8 uh, to um, f16. So that will give me a greater depth of field. But obviously, uh, there's a two-stop difference. So I'm going to need to add two stops of energy. So I'll just do that, like so, and we'll grab that again. Yes, that seems to have improved the uh, focus range a little. Um, the moss on the front of the bricks here is now in focus properly, uh, and the rest of the image is looking quite good. OK, so having set all that up and grabbed that image, that will form our baseline image. So the next thing to do would be to set up a diffusion sheet in almost the same position uh, where this uh, front of the softbox is, uh, leaving the studio head itself in exactly the same place. There we are. So I'm just pulling down this piece of 216 diffusion material. 
So hopefully this will be in uh, the same position as the front of the softbox was and the light obviously is in the same position as it was before. Okay, so without altering anything else, I'll grab another image and we'll see what we get. Okay, and unsurprisingly, we have a very similar result. Uh, you can see now that we don't have an image of a specific light. We've now got a graduation, but it's still running all the way down the bottle. If I flick between what we had before, which is this one, and what we've got now, which is this one, you can see that it's altogether a little bit more graduated. But the softness within the image is about the same. However, that's where the similarities stop. Uh, because there is no softbox, we can do all sorts of things to carry on modifying the light. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put this reflector on the front of this light, just to concentrate the beam a little. So without doing anything else and just putting that on, we'll grab another image and see what it looks like. Now initially it might not look very different. It's possibly slightly more exposed. Uh, if I just go back to the first one that we took there and this one, you can see that it is a bit brighter. Well, that can easily be addressed by taking perhaps half a stop um, off the energy of the flash. The other thing to notice about this is how it's affected the quality of the light. The shadows are a bit sharper than they were before. Uh, which is what we want. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just address that exposure issue. So I'm just going to take maybe half a stop off that, like so. We'll just grab that image again. There, that's better. So if I flip between these two now, you see that the exposure is very nearly the same. But you should also see that the actual size of this uh, highlight has changed. And that is due to the difference in the size of the ball of light projected onto this uh, diffusion sheet by the lamp. Let me show you what I mean. If I just turn on the modelling lamp on here, now you should be able to see that we have a hot spot in here. Now if I just take that reflector and take it off completely, you should see now that the hotspot is much, much bigger. So this is a way of controlling the size of that hotspot. But we can do more than that. I can also move the light now because I'm not constrained with having it in a softbox. So for instance, if I move it back here, like this, and now point it more at the, uh, the subject, like so, now you can see that we've formed a graduation across this sheet, which will change the way the image looks. Let me grab an image and I'll show you what I mean. So now that you can see in this image that we've lost quite a lot of that highlight which was on the bottle and we've now got this rather nice graduation along the necks which I think is a better improvement. You can see on this one specifically we've got a very good graduation going across the neck of the bottle. Okay, now you may have seen in the uh, image there that uh, this part of it uh, where the bricks are is all a bit dark. So what I'm going to do is just fill that in and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do that. One of which is to use a piece of card like this. So if I just put this on the edge here, something like that, that will tend to recycle some of this light back onto the subject. Okay, so we'll just grab that and see what happens. There you go, that's worked. Uh, but you can also see that we've now got a reflection of the card itself in the bottles, which you may or may not want. But there is a way that you can fill in the shadows 
and not get such a highlight on the glass bottles. And that's to use a mirror instead of using a card. So if I take this card out of the way, what I'm going to do is put this mirror somewhere around here somewhere and in order to get it into uh, exactly the right position I'm going to need to turn the house lights out. So I'll do that now. Okay, so if I get the mirror in approximately the right place and I now tip it up you should be able to see that I'm illuminating the side of the bricks. Now because I'm using a mirror and not a piece of card this will give me um, a specular highlight in the bottle uh, which will be much much smaller. So if I just put that about there somewhere and we just grab an image there we are you can see now that we've filled in the shadows and also we've lost the highlight in the bottle. So if I go back to the previous image this is the highlight in the bottle and now it's gone. We've gained a small highlight just on the edge here. That's easily uh, retouched out in Photoshop should you not want it. But I think overall uh, this, the amount of filling that I've got on here is possibly a little too much. So in order to um, reduce that all I need to do is move the mirror back. So the inverse square law will sort out the rest of it for me. So if I just move the mirror a little bit further back get it in the right position with the modelling light again there we are, something like that maybe there, that's much better that's exactly the sort of thing that I want OK, so with that now captured uh, that's it really so what I'll do is I'll import those two images uh, the one with softbox and the one with uh, the diffusion sheet into Photoshop and we'll have a bit of a closer look at them OK, so here we are in Photoshop. This file is the image which was taken with the softbox. And you can see that the uh, highlight on the bottle here has a hard edge to it. That's because the softbox itself has a hard edge. It's a homogeneous light with a hard edge around the outside of it. You can see that particularly in the image on the top of the bottle here. So if we compare that to using the diffusion material uh, and that was a Lee 216 diffusion material you can see now that in the top of the bottle here we have a graduation it's the graduation that was formed on the diffusion material by angling the light so we've ended up with two very different looks from two ways of producing a soft light source now I prefer this one with the diffusion material you have a lot more control over exactly what is going on in the image. So if I just finish this off with a crop for instance uh, I'll pick 16 by 9 because this is destined for the video and I'll just pull it in at the edges just to tidy that up like so maybe take a bit out like that there we are. That's worked quite well. Good. And there we have it. The difference between the two images is very stark and just shows what a little bit of technique can do when you're looking at different ways to light your subject. There is obviously much more control over the light with a diffusion sheet than there is with a softbox, but each has its place. OK, so I hope you liked seeing how I made that picture. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, click the like button, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.